clipboard here. Um, everything is back with the web service API, so I'm actually going to switch over to a different application. Um, and this is more of a graph visualization tool. And the, the point here is basically that um, because everything is an API, we're not talking about being tied to a particular interface. We're talking about um, having a pluggable piece of software that you can put any interface you want on, uh, and it's behind the scenes. So in this case, we have the same piece of software, but multiple interfaces to it. Um, so that if you're a, an expert that wants a graph visualization tool, you can use what I'm using right now. Um, and But if you're uh, more of a, you know, an average user that just wants a, uh, a web interface to what you're doing, um, you can use something like what I, what I showed just a second ago. Um, I just want to turn up one thing before I get too much data back. But the idea is that if this were, um, this is a gene that's, that's highly related to uh, breast cancer research. Um, and if you wanted to start researching, basically you can uh, just start exploring a graph. And uh, I'll, I apologize if this uh, takes a little bit longer because the network connection here is a little bit slow. But, but the basic idea is that you can start with some entity that you know uh, and then start exploring uh, relationships. And I, I just basically said, pull me all the relationships. But you would essentially use that, that thing on the left there to, um, uh, to compose a query uh, and then uh, start drilling into uh, these relationships. And you can see it's pretty, uh, got a couple hundred nodes there or something like that. But this is a type of, um, I don't know how well you can see that. Um, but if you've got a lot of data, um, this is the type of thing where you can start looking at all the relationships. And if you can remember there at the um, very beginning, I showed you uh, there was something pulled from the text that related BRCA2 to BRCA1. It was the, the text mining example. So actually, that caused you know, that line to be there. Because we've taken the, the text, we've boiled it down into a fact, and then like, we visualized the fact um, into this uh, graph here. So again, it's just another interface. It's the same semantic information underneath, um, but it's just another way to look at it. And I, I think that's really all I wanted to show you. Um, but I guess the, the parting thought, um, before I take any questions or we switch, um, is that um, <clears throat> the overall idea is that on this you know, homepage, uh, which is loading, it's loading. Um, the idea here is that basically knowledge is derived from, from all these various sources, gets bubbled up and pushed into the right, you know, the right person to see the right information at the right time. So that if you have an interest in a particular disease, and some article out there was just published through a completely automated process, you get the NLP that gets information about that disease, it determines that it's a new fact that you didn't know, and it knows that because it knows what you've seen before, and then it can then source that uh, or surface that information to you and that's the idea of what, what's here. Basically, new facts rolling in and being shown to you so that you have a very quick uh, idea of what's going on. And I guess take one or two questions before I switch. Yeah? yeah? Do you have any kind of capability where if, uh, if your text analytics tool, be it uh, Calais or, or, uh -huh. or whatever, uh, determines um, a new, a new, you know, using it be a new sentence structure that could possibly be a new relationship to be entered into the model right. you know, above the instance level? Sure. Do you have a capability where a user can have that identified and have a yes or no up or down vote on that? Where they can we don't have a nice, um, sexy interface to that, uh, but but absolutely. So basically, um, within our internal, so not OpenCollide, but our internal um, NLP processing, as we process information, um, it essentially marks things like verbs and, and whatnot that it comes across. And if a verb is, is happening sort of more frequently than you would think, then it, that's essentially a suggestion that you might want to tie that to you know, create a new part of your ontology that would create that relationship. So, so are you getting a feedback loop effect, positive one, of course, where, where the more you utilize the tool over a, a given domain of documents, mm -hmm. that it actually becomes more effective at identifying uh, instance levels and drawing more data out? Right? Yeah, certainly, um, again, we don't have a nice interface to that, but what we do is we basically process content, and we can statistically look at the results and say, like, oh, here's some information, here's a new type of relationship that we haven't accounted for. So let's add that into the ontology. Uh, the, the, the biomedical ontology, uh, that's part of the, the output of our biomedical text parser, has around 200 relationship types, uh, which map to a couple hundred verbs uh, behind the scenes. So things like, 
and this, this molecule binds to this other molecule. So it, it basically has, 